Good morning, everybody. Uh, I think we are going to start the webcast. Uh, everything is ready. Um, so we are going to um, present uh, a work by one of our um, customers, um, Patrick Oradi from uh, Trauma Center Murnau and Paracelsus Medical University of Salzburg. Uh, and the title of the webcast is Thoughts Analysis of the Heat Trend for Occupational Activities. Uh, so first of all, um, I would like to present myself. I'm going to be the host for today. My name is Pavel Galiparov. I'm a senior consultant at Anybody Technology, and I will <coughs> introduce Patrick in a few minutes. So I will briefly introduce Anybody Technology and the products that we have uh, first, and after that we will continue with the webcast. And uh, later on you will have a chance to ask your questions. So first of all, I would like to um, inform you that uh, it is possible to ask questions during the webcast. So, so don't wait until the end of the webcast. You can uh, submit them right away. And once the webcast is finished, we are going to answer some of them. And those that we do not have time to answer will be answered uh, later uh, by email or maybe in the chat. So first of all, who is Anybody? Um, Anybody Technology is a company that is based in the northern Denmark, in, a, in this town called Olberg. And we also have an office in the United States, in Boston. <coughs> and we are the providers of the Anybody modeling system. Uh, we provide services, licenses, training, support, consulting. Um, we also have uh, a branch a research branch, anybody research group, and we have uh, several universities uh, who are in the research group. And so in Norberg we have Professor John Rasmussen, and in the United States we have uh, Professor Tony Petrella. In Germany we have uh, Sebastian Dundorf in Regensburg. We also have uh, resellers and distributors worldwide so for more information, please visit our website if you're interested to of contact, contacting them. What is anybody? Uh, when we talk about anybody, we typically uh, mention two products uh, that anybody provides. One, the first one is anybody modeling system. This is the angel engine, the tool that is used for modeling um, human. And anybody that manage model repository, as it speaks for itself, it's a body model of the human. And we also have a library of applications that represent activities of daily living. So a person can take one of them and start modeling his own task. When we talk about muscular simulation, we are talking about uh, rigid body dynamics. In our particular case, we talk about inverse dynamics approach, where we take the input, <coughs> the input to be uh, motion, kinematics. We take uh, body model, bones, joints, muscle, ligaments, and as a result, we compute uh, forces, joint reaction forces, muscle forces, uh, muscle activities, uh, metabolic uh, energy, and so on. So this is how it typically looks like. For example, the input on the left, uh, we have a motion capture um, data. For example, a person walking on, a, on the force plate. But it doesn't have to be motion capture. You can also prescribe uh, joint angles to drive your model. As an output, uh, we get muscle forces and joint reaction forces. Uh, and our model consists of many different body parts. Um, it is quite detailed. We have over 1,200 uh, muscle branches in the model. Uh, we have most of the bones represented as segments. <coughs> so it is a very detailed model. Anybody modeling system is used in many different fields, and the spectrum of applications is very broad. And uh, I will present uh, a selected um, 
application, I will present selected applications on this particular slide. We have a branch for gate analysis. Uh, we have a small application called AnyGate that allows you to process your gate trials. Uh, it can be used for product uh, design optimization. Uh, people use it for ergonomic analysis and documentation. One can compute physiological loads for structural analysis, for finite element analysis, and it is widely used in our orthopedics and trauma. Uh, today's webcast uh, is going to cover several uh, of these fields at the same time. So it's going to be um, a study about uh, motion capture driven kinematic uh, models, kinematic and dynamic models. and uh, Another part of it will use the loads computed during the musculoskeletal analysis to be used for infinite elements. And it is also applied in the ergonomics field, uh, not in orthopedic field, I'm sorry. Um, many of our applications and uh, different components of the model are validated against experimental data. And many of our users uh, published papers describing how it was validated. So please have a look on our website. There are quite many if you're interested. So I'm going to present uh, uh, our speaker today. Um, it is Patrick Kouradi. He has a background in mechanical engineering uh, where he received, he received his degree from Leibniz University of Hanover. And since 2010, he works as a research assistant in the Institute of uh, Biomechanics at Trauma Center of Murnau in Germany. And since 2013, he works also in Paracelsus Medical University in Salzburg, Austria, a postgraduate program in the medical science. So he works in two places at the same time. And today he is going to present uh, his work which is called Lot Analysis of the Hip Joint for Occupational Activities. And without further delay, I'm going to give the speaker's role to Patrick so he can present his work. Okay, thank you, Pavel, for the kind introduction and thank you for the possibility to present our um, study here. Um, the study is a cooperation of the Institute of Biomechanics in Mono and the Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, Health in um, St. Augustine. So uh, I'll start with an um, introduction about our research topic and then there will be um, the methods for motion capture and for multivariate simulation, which is anybody, um, the methods and the results and for the, the finite element analysis, also methods and results, and finally I'll discuss our work. So um, our main topic is the osteoarthritis of the hip, and here are some numbers to characterize this disease. Um, hip osteoarthritis has a prevalence of nearly 11% for men and women combined, and in Germany in 2011 um, there were 2.6 million work incapacity days uh, because of hip osteoarthritis and it made up for 7.6 billion euros of the direct cost in the German healthcare system together with uh, the other forms of osteoarthritis, um, about 3% of the whole costs. The yeah, additional costs um, from the early retirement and of course um, it's a very challenging disease for the affected persons. Um, all this um, accounts for a high socioeconomic relevance for the disease. Um, our question is if there could be an association um, of work life and the etiology of the disease. Um, at least in the literature there's uh, some evidence, even if it's weak. Um, so here our main research question. Uh, will occupational activities generate higher hip joint loads than everyday activities? And of course, we are also interested uh, which magnitudes um, these loads have. And we wanted to compare occupational risk-associated activities here in the, the red box 
uh, we wanted to look at lifting, carrying and transferring of weights of 25, 40 and 50 kilograms, um, stair climbing with a weight of 25 kilograms <coughs> or without a weight and also we had ladder climbing with uh, two different angles and we wanted to compare these two everyday activities and we choose um, walking and sitting down onto a chair, getting up from a chair and how did we want to compare these? We wanted to compare the loads in the hip joint occurring for the different activities and the loads um, were ca calculated by um, multivariate simulation and finite element analysis. So first our experimental setup. Um, we had to um, get three-dimensional measurements of our test person's movement for the activities. Um, therefore, we had a 12-camera Viken capture, motion capture system, and apart from um, two of those usual force plates that are embedded in the floor, we had a ladder here with an instrumented rung and a staircase with an instrumented step. And yeah, the movement was assessed by recording the trajectories of these uh, retroreflective markers and the external forces were recorded by our uh, force measurement apparatus. Um, so we had um, 11 test subjects, test persons, sorry, um, who um, performed every activity three times and um, the test persons were all male, and didn't have diseases of the hip joint, uh, understood the tasks and um, what is, was important for the um, motion capture method to work is that they had only little soft tissue movement. Um, all the test persons were blue collar workers and we assumed that they had the physical requirements to perform the tasks asked of them and um, that they were also familiar with um, comparable activities. So now I'll talk about the multivariate simulation. Um, we used the um, recorded um, movements and for external forces and transferred them onto an antibody model. We used the AMS version 6.01 and the mocap full body model from the repository version um, 1.6. Um, we used the model with modified hip extensors and of course um, scaled the models anthropometrically. Uh, we limited the parametric optimization of this model and the results were saved in the H5, form, H5 file format and um, subsequently analyzed in MATLAB. So next I'll go into these points in, in detail. Um, so first what did we do with the hip extensors? Um, as you can see here the, the stand model on the left hand side and here our modified model on the right hand side. Um, this has been provided by the anybody support and is based on anatomical measurements and so for, for the extension of the hip a moment has to be generated uh, by the extensor muscles and um, for the standard model um, the gluteus muscles don't uh, have a sufficient moment arm and for the updated model the gluteus muscles have a moment arm so they can generate the um, extension moment in a more efficient way and this um, is due to a, a wrapping cylinder at this hip joint. And the updated model was yeah, uh, working properly while the standard model will recruit the biceps femoris to generate the extension moment and this will result in very, very high hip joint forces. And here's another picture of the problem showing that the gluteus muscles in, in red here uh, can actually lead directly through the hip joint in, in some cases. Uh, but it has to be said that this only occurred for, for higher hip flexion angles and that in our case um, the standard model would work fine, for example, for level gait and um, that this will only occur for very high flexion angles of the hip. And as I said before, the anybody people already addressed this problem and uh, since repository version 1.6.3 it's already possible to, to activate the muscle wrapping 
and the next generation of anybody models uh, will also incorporate uh, muscle wrapping based on the TLAM 2.0 data set which has already been published in the Journal of Biomechanics and there's also a previous webcast on this topic. Um, so um, about the parameter optimization, um, because, because the marker placement of the test persons did not change from trial to trial or from activity to activity, we were of the opinion that uh, the same model should be used for every simulation of a single um, test person. Hence, we created a kind of average um, parametric set that worked for every trial of a single test person. And to create that, we used the standard parametric optimization method, but afterwards limited the, uh, the parametric optimization by turning it off as uh, shown in the, in the figure. And the final step was um, analyzing the data with um, a graphical user interface. Um, we created in MATLAB. Um, this allowed to import the H5 files and to trim them um, and to find force maxima. Um, additionally, this allowed us to export the data for um, further processing with the software provided by Bender and colleagues. Um, to, to use um, dynamic time warping to create average curves. And yeah, time warping is a signal processing method um, to distort the signals nonlinearly uh, so that they are more similar. And these are the results or some of the results. Um, so some videos of ladder climbing in anybody. And Stair climbing in anybody. And then we have the sitting down motion uh, without a chair. And now I want to show you some um, curves for these activities. So in the following diagrams, you can always see the hip joint contact forces and the horizontal axis is the stance phase in percent. The vertical axis is the hip joint contact force in percent body weight. And um, the solid lines are the results of the dynamic time warping, which we use to create these averages. Um, the black line is always um, the resulting hip joint contact force, and the others are the force components. These gray areas are the um, area between the 25th and 75th percentile. Um, so this is our result for um, level gate. And to be, to be able to evaluate these results, here are some in vivo data. Um, these data originate in the autoload database. Um, this database provides in vivo data of several implant types and um, the data is assessed by telemetric implants and was created by Professor Bergman in Berlin. So I think we can see in nice isochronics still our maximum forces are a little bit higher. We have about 350% body weight. And so now I'll show some more curves for which we have uh, comparable data in autoload. So this is um, carrying off 25 kilograms. Uh, I have to say that the, the in vivo data originates from carrying uh, 22 kilograms. Still, um, we see an nice accordance, and we had uh, maximum forces of about 400% uh, body weight. Um, this is sitting down onto a chair, and the maximum was something like 2.4 times body weight, getting up from a chair had a similar force, 2.5 times body weight, and finally uh, I want to show you an overview of all the activities. Um, here you can see all the average maximum hip joint contact forces, um, so the bars represent the average maximum hip joint contact forces, we have uh, several columns. The columns are the different activities, so gait, sitting down, lifting, carrying, and so on. And if there's um, different different difficulty level 
examples for negativity, we have more than one bar. So for example, for lifting 25, 40, and 50 kilograms, for um, climbing stairs with and without the weight, and the two different angles for um, ladder climbing. And on the left-hand side, we have the um, everyday activities. And the um, dashed line here indicates the um, le level of hip joint contact force for gait. And as you can see, for example, for lifting 25 kilograms, it's about the same load level we have for gait. Um, the difference is that for gait, only one leg is loaded, and that for lifting, both legs uh, will be loaded simultaneously. Uh, you, we see, also see that according to the um, additional weight, the hip joint contact force will increase. And we also did a repeated measures ANOVA, <coughs> comparing gait to all the occupational activities, um, neglecting the sitting down, getting up part, and found that carrying 40 and 50 kilograms um, load transfer in general and uh, climbing stairs up with the additional load will increase, uh, will result in, in significantly higher hip joint contact forces than for gait. And yeah, the results or the methods can also be uh, seen in our paper in the Journal of Biomechanics that can be downloaded for free for some more weeks. And now the next part is the finite element analysis. Um, first of all, we had to get some uh, geometries, and these guys down here, they provide CT arthrograms um, in which it's possible to segment the cartilage, which we did in MIMICS, and we used yeah, a semi-automatic method with uh, using a threshold first and then working on every slice manually. And then about our model, um, we we used ANSYS workbench and we um, superimposed our segmented geometry and the anybody geometry and subsequently their co coordinate systems. And this way we um, could use the forces and the angles from the multibody simulation in um, anybody as boundary conditions. And this was yeah an easy step because we only needed those two parameters. For or the FEA, and yeah, we transformed every results and every parameters um, to the right hip joints coordinate system for better comparability. So, um, yeah, our our primary objective was not to calculate the most realistic contact pressures, but we wanted um, to compare the contact areas and the contact pressure magnitudes for the different activities. So, comparing the occupational and the everyday activities, um, and we, we limited the model um, to a reach of interest. As you can see in this picture, we only wanted to look into the hip joint contact pressures. Um, yeah, the pelvis had a fixed support. The hip joint contact force was applied to the femur. Um, the cartilage was modeled as a neo hook and material. The bone was linear isotropic, and between bone and cartilage, we had a bonded contact, and between the two cartilage uh, sliding partners, we had a frictional contact. And now uh, the results of the FEA, they will always be displayed as um, the contact pressures in the right acetabulum as seen from lateral. Um, so. Here in the upper images, this is the contact pressures for level gate, and in the lower images, we have the contact pressures for carrying of 50 kilograms. And carrying is somehow like level gate, just with the additional weight in both hands. And as you can see in these images on the right, um, they represent the time of the simulated load step. Um, they should represent um, the first peak in the stance phase for, for both activities. And yeah, for the scale, it's, uh, it's not the same scale, but red is always the highest pressure. We have 12.5 megapascals for 
level gate and 15.6 megapascals for um, carrying of 50 kilograms. And for carrying, we see that the um, area shifts a little more into the posterior area uh, and that a greater area is loaded, which would be what we suspect with the higher load. And yeah, these bar charts represent um, the area in square millimeters loaded with the pressure magnitude. And as you can see, and as one would presume, this shifts more into areas of higher pressure for the additional 50 kilograms. And here, some more results. Um, this is for lifting 50 kilograms, and this is for climbing stairs with 25 kilograms, both um, times um, for the maximum hip joint contact force that occurred, which is um, for climbing stairs, also something like the first peak in the stance phase. And here it's when it's the um, moment when the highest hip joint flexion occurs. And what we can see here is that this has the highest um, pressure for all the four examples. And if we uh, think that the hip joint contact force will be in one axis with the femoral axis, we would think that the posterior part of the acetabulum would um, be where the highest pressures occur. And this is also what we can see in this image here. And about uh, climbing stairs, this is also comparable to um, level gait and carrying because it's some kind of walking motion. And this um, pressure area just shifts a little more into the posterior direction because uh, we have a higher hip joint flexion to, to bring the leg up the step. Um, yeah, we also saw that with the additional weights, um, always somehow the lower posterior region of the acetabulum will be loaded. And of course, that with um, higher forces and greater compression, we have a greater um, contact area. So finally, um, the discussion. First, I want to mention some limitations. We did not use any CT data or something like that to create the subject-specific models in anybody. Uh, we only scaled according to the test person's anthropometrics. <coughs> uh, yeah, we used a simplified FEA model, and we used yet another bony geometry for the FEA. Um, also, the FEA is not validated by any experiments. We only um, looked at previous studies. Um, but I think um, the, the results which generated in anybody are quite interesting and are comparable to in vivo data. Um, they also agree uh, with previous studies uh, regarding the maximum occurring hip joint contact forces. Um, and that's the same for the FAA um, in terms of contact pressure magnitudes. Um, this also agrees with the literature. Um, in general, we, we did not find any mechanisms of which we could derive any uh, relationship of, of a specific activity and osteoarthritis. And for example, we can say high forces uh, will directly have a detrimental effect on the, the cartilage. Um, so I think from our results, uh, we now have an idea about the magnitudes of the hip joint contact forces for different occupational activities. Uh, for example, that we can have um, double the force for level gate if we look at uh, low transfer of 50 kilograms or something. Uh, we saw that um, the highest loads will occur for those activities involving one leg stances and the um, carrying of an additional weight of course, and we also think that this uh, research uh, serves as an orientation for epidemiological studies. So that was all. Thank you for your attention, and I'm interested.
interested in your questions. <laughs> Okay, Patrick, thank you very much uh, for your very nice presentation. Um, uh, it was very interesting to hear uh, the results of it because uh, you would expect that carrying a lot of weight would uh, increase the hip uh, joint loads and other loads in the body. But it's very nice to quanti quantify these numbers and to see them side by side as well. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. I think um, uh, before we get to the questions, I would like to say a few words. Um, just some information for the listeners. So there will be another webcast on 10th of November, and I will say a little bit, a few words about it uh, in a second. I would like to mention that uh, you can visit our website for future events, for the conference conferences that we attend, uh, for the publication list, and so on. And uh, we also use a wiki. We have a Wikipedia describing how to use antibody models and forum where we help to help our customers uh, to answer the questions. Uh, you can also visit our channel on YouTube, uh, which is called Anybody Tech, where you can see nice videos of our models, with previous webcasts, some tips and tricks. And the next webcast is going to happen on 10th of November. It will be presented by Henry Kobler from Copenhagen, and he is going to talk about uh, Occupational activities, again, very interesting, but this time it's going to be about uh, luggage handlers in Copenhagen Airport. So it's going to be a very interesting presentation, so please uh, save the dates and uh, join the webcast. <laughs>